Kirby might be the star of the show on the surface, but come on. We all know who the real protagonist of the Kirby series is. Who's the man with the big hammer and the bigger redemption arc? Who's the king of dreamland just because he says he is? Who's the downright smoothest penguin around? It's King D D D, and it's high time we gave this literal emperor penguin the royal treatment he deserves. But while King DDD has been a hero, he's also been a villain. And also sometimes the spinoffs just need a token bad guy. I'm Keefe Inosi with 1UP Binge, and these are King DDD's DDD's Good to Evil. Starting with our good section, we'll begin with King DDD's less remarkable deeds and working our way up to the ones that justify his rightful throne as King of Dreamland. These are the good DDD's. King DDD has a surprisingly long list of good deeds, and they begin with his very second appearance, Sealing Nightmare in the Fountain of Dreams in Kirby's Adventure. For a 2D platformer on the NES to have any story beyond, there's a bad guy, stop them, is pretty impressive. And Kirby, being absolute peak gaming, decides to go crazy in his second game by having a full-on plot twist. When main villain of his debut, King Dedede, returned, it seemed reasonable to expect him to be a consistent villain for the series, like the Bowser of the series. While Kirby and Dedede are certainly rivals, it turns out that King Dedede's act of stealing the Star Rod and breaking it was fully well-intentioned. The Nightmare Wizard had corrupted the source of Dreamland's dreams, the Fountain of Dreams, which resulted in the residents being tormented with the nightmares. Understandably, King Dedede actually stole the Star Rod to keep Nightmare from torturing the residents' minds, the first hint in the series that, for all his faults, Dedede actually cares for his subjects and hates to see them suffer. The only reason we don't place this act higher is that Dedede really didn't think it through. While breaking the Star Rod did keep Dreamland free of nightmares, it also took away their dreams. So from Kirby's viewpoint, DDD was being a total jerk and taking dreams away from his subjects. This might not have been true, but there are definitely some smarter, or at least less harmful deeds under the King's belt. For instance, saving Dreamland's second greatest hero doesn't really have its drawbacks, like the time DDD saved Kirby's life. Pretty much anyone with any knowledge of Kirby can agree that he's almost certainly one of the strongest characters in video game history. But while he's able to defeat threats of enormous size, there are a few few rare times he's been in trouble. In Kirby Triple Deluxe, Kirby's actually captured by Queen Sectonia after the first phase of her fight, leaving him unable to move and shouting for help. This is an incredibly rare moment where Kirby is in genuine danger, but thankfully, King DDD foresaw this, and with his kidnapper turned Taxi Taranza, he whacks Kirby out of the Evil Queen's grasp, giving him a miracle fruit from Taranza to end the fight once and for all. And all this after a long day of being kidnapped and brainwashed too. Uh, perhaps the only thing more noble than saving your own planet is saving someone else's. So let's talk about DDD helping save Ripple Star. Kirby 64 might just be the most pivotal game in King DDD's series spanning character arc. Going from a pure villain in Dreamland to a well intentioned antagonist in Adventure to a possessed antagonist in Dreamland 2, 3, and briefly in this game, Kirby 64 finally puts King DDD in playable character territory. After being beaten up by Kirby and freed from Dark Matter's control for the third time now, Mind you, DDD is understandably tired and annoyed. But something's changed this time. Despite some initial reluctance, DDD puts his pride aside and runs after Kirby and friends to help them save Ripple Star. Perhaps it's from gratitude for Kirby saving him again, or maybe he just wants to be a proper king. But either way, this is the first time King DDD steps into a full on heroic role. He seems to be genuinely enjoying his time throughout the game, eating with everyone, rescuing Kirby on one occasion, and even crying when it's time to say goodbye to Ribbon. At this point, it's not only impossible to call DDD a villain, it's genuinely hard to call him less than a hero. That's the first step to DDD becoming the kind-hearted king we know and love today. We now enter the top three, starting with him helping to fix Magalore's ship, which takes the bronze medal of good. While playing with Kirby and Waddle Dee, or maybe trying to steal some of his cake, DDD and gang notice a gigantic blue space pirate ship coming through a massive star-shaped rift in the sky. Granted, it would not be hard to notice this, but it certainly raised interest. When the ship's owner, Magalore, wakes up, he's horrified to find all of his energy spheres have disappeared, as well as most of his ship's parts. Of course, Kirby's instantly willing to help, just like with a ribbon earlier. DDD also agrees, and unlike in Kirby 64, there's no reluctance. DDD is not only willing to help someone he doesn't know in what will surely be a long and difficult journey, but he also has no problem teaming up with Kirby to do so. It's official. They're best everyone. When Magalor ends up betraying the group, DDD helps Kirby and company stop him from taking over Popstar, and when Magalor later apologizes, DDD seems to be the one most willing to forgive him, considering he let Magalor build the courses in DDD's drum dash. The only thing better than saving the universe is playing a crucial role in saving the multiverse, which takes the silver medal of good. For this deed, we exit the main series and head over to Super Smash Bros. Brawl's subspace emissary mode. Herein, King DDD is portrayed initially as a villain, kidnapping certain fighters like Luigi and Ness, turning them into trophies. But it turns out that, like in Kirby's Adventure, it's all well-intentioned. Knowing the extent of Taboo's plan and the danger he poses to the entire world, 
and potentially much more, he captures the heroes to make sure they can help stop him. It's also worth noting that DDD isn't screwing around here. He straight up smacks Bowser for trying to fight him instead of focusing on the threat of Taboo, a far cry from the naughty king he once was. There's also the adorable scene where he absolutely tackles Kirby with a hug, delighted to see that he's okay. Honestly, this may be one of the rare games where he's even more heroic than the little guy, but what if we told you there was one deed that we decided to place above this? King DDD's gold medal of good takes us to the Forgotten Land, where he fought an army for one Waddle D. Upon arriving in the mysterious alternate dimension, King DDD is understandably upset not to see Kirby around, and just as understandably, he's possessed as usual by the main villain of the game. Despite his struggles, he succumbs to the power and ends up helping Facto Elphilus kidnap the Waddle Dees to use as slaves. Thankfully, once Kirby defeats him in battle and breaks his mask, DDD is himself once again and heads to help Kirby defeat the giant threat. That is, until a little Waddle trips and falls on the way to the elevator. DDD goes back to help him up, and here he shows exactly what kind of king he's become. With the elevator barely open, he tosses the Waddle Dee into the door with Kirby and raises himself to fight off the entire Beast Pack army by himself. And of all the superlatives. <laughs> If there was ever any doubt that DDD is a true hero, this scene quelled that doubt. It's one thing to save the universe or the multiverse in some flashy way, but DDD was willing to battle an entire army, possibly even sacrificing his own life, just to save one of his subjects. There's no selfish intention, there's no ego, there's no desire for glory, there's simply kindness and self-sacrifice that only Kirby himself could compete with. Enjoy that gorgeous lounging in Waddle Dee Town, DDD. You've more than earned it. But to prove just how close to perfect King DDD is, we also ought to cover his less favorable moments. These are the bad to evil DD deeds. Let's we'll start with a brief reminder that mental health is important. If you don't seek the right help, you might just find yourself constantly possessed by your demons. In King DDD's case, these demons just so happen to be whatever dark evil beings the game commands. We mentioned the Dark Matter trilogy earlier, Dreamland 2, 3, and Kirby 64, but what about the numerous other times? There was his unfortunately timed look at a dark heart in Kirby Star Allies, the aforementioned manipulation by Fecto in Forgotten Land, and perhaps most memorably being turned into masked DDD again by Terranza, who is apparently a DDD fan too since he knew about that mask. There are probably more, and we're sure there will be more in the future, but while we can't blame King DDD for being possessed by powerful demons, we'd feel wrong not at least mentioning it, considering the danger and trouble he causes when under their influence. It's also worth mentioning that there's actually an underlying reason for King DDD being targeted by demons so often, his grudge against Kirby. We get it, man. Kirby thinks he's the star of the show, even though you're the king, and he always beats you. It's understandable that you want to beat him, but apparently the grudge has gone on a bit too long. In Planet Robobot, Susie intimidates Kirby by saying she's cloned a certain someone who has a long-standing grudge against him. That someone being King Dedede, of course. This might sound strange, since Kirby and King Dedede are close friends, but while Dedede has attempted to get over his grudge against Kirby in games like Superstar Ultra's Revenge of the King mode and Kirby Fighters 2, it's never fully gone away. And if his actions are any indication, it probably won't be long until the big guy finally wins. It's more than likely that being of dark energy attacking Dreamland target DDD because not only is he powerful, but he's got a lot of negative energy deep down too due to his envy of Kirby's strength. It's not quite evil, but it's definitely something he should get checked out. On that note, let's give a quick mention to the Battle Royale tournament in Kirby Battle Royale, aka Why Was This $40? The video game. King DDD reprises his role as a pure antagonist for the first time in years. He manages to build a machine capable of cloning Kirby's that can rival him in combat, which, first of all, has terrifying implications and plans to use the tournament to finally beat Kirby. Again, this isn't evil, King Dedede's just competing with Kirby as usual, but it shows that he's willing to cheat if that's what it takes to finally defeat Kirby. But hey, if Battle Royale did anything right, it was giving back King Dedede's southern drawl from the anime. Speaking of which, Anime Dedede takes the Bronze Medal of Evil. The Kirby anime portrays King Dedede in a much different light from the games. How should we put this? He's a massive Dedede dick, the lyric, I need a monster to clobber that there Kirby, describes his role in the series in its entirety. This man's whole life revolves around bullying Kirby and hiring monsters to beat him. His cruelty also extends to oppressing and overworking his subjects and even selling his Waddle Dees from vending machines, treating them as literal objects. The only reason we won't put anime DDD any higher is the fact that he's been shown to have a few moments of decency. When he thought the world was ending, he built Kirby a playground to enjoy, and when he thought he actually killed Kirby, he was absolutely devastated, showing that, from his perspective, he's really just having fun with his little battles with Kirby. He's not pure evil, but, but he's still a total jerk. 
but when it does come to DDD's most infamous crimes, they all boil down to theft. And our silver medal of evil goes to stealing all the stars in the sky. While it probably isn't the first theft that comes to mind, King DDD has a weirdly specific habit of stealing all the stars in Dreamland's beautiful sky. He's done this, at minimum, in Kirby's Dreamland, Kirby's Dream Course, and most prominently, in Kirby Tilt and Tumble. The reasons for this are mostly unclear. It could be that he wants to take them away so they won't be taking away attention from his royal highness, as if those balls of gas could possibly rival him. I, I don't know. Or maybe King DDD just wants to keep all the beauty for himself, so he takes all of them to make sure that can happen. Or, further still, maybe he's just trying to piss Kirby off. In any case, he doesn't seem too concerned that he's taking a lot of joy away from the citizens of Dreamland, even sending them into depression. Mental health is important, King DDD. Taking that away from someone else is not cool. But physical health is also very important, of course, and it would be hard for King DDD to do something worse for his subjects than his worst and first deed in the series. Stealing all the food in Dreamland, an act that definitely takes the gold medal of evil. Oh boy. You know, we all have that one memory from middle school or high school or something that we just hate to think about? This has got to be King DDD's equivalent. It doesn't matter how many times you help your friends save the universe, be an absolute giga chad, risk your neck to save a waddle dee, people are always gonna be bringing up that embarrassing time you, you stole all the food in Dreamland for yourself. But honestly, it is hard to blame them for that. King DDD literally took all the food. He potentially could have starved the entirety of his kingdom just so he could have a few more apples and chicken drumsticks for himself. If it were just gluttony, it'd be one thing, but to be unconcerned with the prospect of starving your entire country amps it up a notch. Even Bowser might feel a bit horrified looking at that one. That said, it does seem that Kirby teaching him a lesson actually did get through to him. At the end of Dreamland's extra mode, DDD is seen crying, prompting Kirby to walk after him to comfort him. Likewise, in Tilt and Tumble, the same things happen, and excluding remakes for possession, those were respectively the last times DDD stole food or stars from Dreamland. No, Kirby, he did not steal your shortcake. The only thing he stole was all of our hearts.